Hey, it's Matt at Rough House Studios, and welcome to the Vivosun Smart Grow Box Grow Series. This is episode one covering the unboxing and setup. This video is sponsored by Vivosun. If you'd like to learn more or to purchase, please visit vivosun.com and use the code ROUGHHOUSE to save some money. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up this big old box that has the grow box in it. And unlike other grow box I've reviewed, this box is actually pretty small and easy to handle. So that's one positive thing I think about it uh, already from the beginning. Inside of the larger box is a series of smaller boxes that contain the different components that will be assembled to make the smart grow box. There's also some accessories included, uh, an instruction guide, and a supply box. Inside the supply box, you have the felt grow bag, a cocoa coir block, some little domes for humidity for seedling starting, a syringe, a nutrient bases. Uh, it's got a lot that you need uh, to grow everything, so that's a lot included in this box. And then we have the accessories box, which includes uh, some clippers, a little scrog net, some twist ties or some uh, ties to tie the plants up to do uh, low stress training, uh, sensors for heat and temperature, uh, little hooks to hang the net, and also a, a measuring uh, cup for adding the nutrients. And then we also have a box that it contains uh, the base unit, uh, but this is the top unit. Uh, the top unit includes uh, ventilation fans. Uh, with a, a charcoal filter bent into it, a uh, built-in full-spectrum light that's built into the top there. There's also some circulation vents uh, that you can see here to allow the air to circulate through the box. So really cool uh, all-in-one uh, unit with most of the components being, uh, or the electronic components being built into the top box. And then you have the base, uh, which is, this is not a hydroponic system, this is a self-watering soil system. So there's this basin at the bottom that comes out so you can empty the water pretty easily. Also, the power cord is stored in there for shipping. Uh, and there's these little like uh, cotton wicks that hang down into the water and go up to the top so that your felt bag sits on top of those. And that moisture uh, sort of uh, bleeds up into the bag. It's drawn up in through the cocoa choir. I'm not exactly sure what those vents are on the back there, but uh, we'll figure that out in one of the other episodes and go over what that's for. Uh, also included are some sensors. Uh, there's a water sensor, there's a water level meter, and then, of course, the base unit itself. And then the one final box, this is the biggest box that was in that larger container, contains the rails that will uh, form the box, uh, the side walls of the box, and there were the posts of the box. And then the side walls are formed by this big, uh, very heavy-duty uh, canvas wrap. Okay, now we're going to jump into the assembly section of the video. And this is uh, really straightforward. Each of the posts are labeled with the direction that they go. And uh, the posts just poke down into those holes that are in the base and they click in. It's very obvious and very straightforward how to assemble that part of the box. There's the A post that go in the back and the B post that go in the front. Once you have those assembled, you can put the top on and the, the top just slides down over the post that you've already installed and then it clicks into spot so that you know that you've got it securely fastened in. Just really easy to put together. One of the, the simplest designs I've seen and I really like that the box can be collapsed so that if you need to store it or move it it's not a big bulky like moving in one of those old TVs that weigh 500 pounds or whatever. <laughs> so uh, really clever design there. Once you have the top put on you can go ahead and plug it in and it'll fire up at its uh, default setting and it'll cycle through the modes. Now this does connect to their smart app and we'll go over that in the next episode. It's not required to use the app. You can actually just use it uh, with the interface that's built into it. But of course we're going to go over how you connect it to the app and I'll do that in the second episode because there's a whole lot to go over in this episode. And now I'm installing into the base. I just put in the water level meter. It's uh, not electronic, the water level meter. It's just a little mechanical uh, float. And then this other is the water sensor that plugs into its pole. It's a little hole that's provided in the base there. And then it, uh, there's a wire that runs up. I run it up the side of the post there to get it out of the way. And then I also, the uh, sensor for temperature and humidity comes from the top. And I hung it through the same little slot in the 
in the post to hide the wire and uh, it's installed and sticks into the top. So both the water sensor and the temperature humidity sensor stick into the top and then you just zip on the side or they call it a skin and uh, I'm assuming it's a skin that it's either available now or will sometime be available in different styles. Uh, this is just a, a black incognito and which I actually kind of like. And so once it's uh, fully assembled, it looks like this. Really cool little chart in the back to help you gauge when to uh, take different steps on the plant or if you want to do the low stress training or when to top it, when to put the trellis net and all that. Really, really neat. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and get it set up for putting in a plant. What I've done now is I've switched it to the seedling mode because I'm going to actually start the seed right into the uh, cocoa choir inside of this and I'm adding in some water. Uh, for the very beginning, when I'm uh, sprouting the seeds, I'm just going to use regular uh, distilled water in here. So you, you want to make sure that it's uh, you know, pH neutral, balanced water. And uh, so I just use distilled water, to fill it up, and then I'm going to put the cocoa choir into the felt bag. And I always love cocoa choir, uh, the blocks like this, because it's so satisfying to watch it grow when you pour the water on it. It expands so much. So, of course, we're going to take a second to enjoy that <laughs> swelling of the cocoa guar. I don't know why it just seems so satisfying. It's kind of like watching uh, bread bake in the oven. Um, so it just, just keeps growing and growing and growing. And that little bitty block uh, will end up uh, nearly filling this whole, uh, I think it's a three-gallon bag. Just really cool looking. I like that cocoa guar. And now there are nutrients that are provided uh, with the box too. And like I said, I'm just using uh, base water at this point because I don't want to. The seeds really don't need nutrients. The nutrients for a seed are inside of the seed already. So I'm just using uh, the distilled water at this point. And then we'll talk more about adding in the nutrients when we get to the vegetative cycle in the next video. But there you go. It's all set up now. The, it's got water in the base. Uh, the cocoa choir is swollen and uh, ready for the seed. And I've went ahead and sprouted a couple of little seeds. And I'm going to pick the best one of these two. I'm going to put the other one outside and grow it outdoors. And so I'm just going to put it under the cocoa choir just about a half inch or so. And then I'm going to put one of these little humidity domes over the top of that. Okay, and stay tuned to the video because we're going to go into the sprouting of the seeds and uh, the vegetative cycle on the next episode. Again, visit vivosun.com to learn more about it to purchase this and use the code ROUGHHOUSE to save some money. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, and make sure you hit the bell so you're notified when we release a new video. This is Matt from Roughhouse Studios. Thanks for watching.